G'day my friends and welcome to Marty's Garden, a live show coming directly to you from Australia. We've got a little video coming up in a second where I shot out at 560 Farbs showing you um, some no dig gardening there, so a really good example. We're going to be looking at the benefits of no dig gardening and also the disadvantages of it. And what's best for you, what should you choose and why? Now I'm an advocate for no dig gardening but it isn't always the best answer in every scenario and i will explain why i'm really looking forward to your inputs from people watching uh the rerun down in the comments box down below and also the inputs from you guys that are going to be sharing with me live today here at on the marty's garden channel it's going to be a really great really great video and if you haven't learned much about no dig gardening you're still just considering whether it's best for you hang around watch the show and you will learn lots and you'll pick up some great tips along the way even if you haven't been doing it or you're considering it or a wide variety of ways and look it has expanded out hugely in the last few years and there are many many ways of doing it so anyway let's get into this video here hopefully it all comes out nice and fine and plays well for you i've got a I'm going to play it on a screen on my screen uh, it's a video that I shot out at 560 Farms just recently when I went out there to visit and um, we got a lot of content coming up from there but I take a look at their no dig system so let's go we'll move on to that and we will get into it all right I just got to click the play button here guys and hopefully this all works well and also I've got to mute my mic somehow so just let me mute my mic first Actually, no, it won't come through because of my headphones. Sweet. <laughs> All right. Still get used to these guys. Let's go. Let's roll it.
All right, so <laughs> there we go, my friends. A uh, quick little video that I shot out there at 560 Farms. Uh, I've got other stuff coming up, sort of mixed into the vlogs and things like that in the future. Uh, some different things about microgreens and making soil blends and organic potting mixes, uh, growing tomatoes in pots, and there's some, we've got some really good stuff out there. But today we're talking about the great old, well, I shouldn't say great old, no dig versus dig gardening. And what would sh what should we consider actually choosing for our space? And I'd really like to hear from you guys uh, what you think. What I've got to do is uh, just my software here, just pull out some of the comments. And um, yeah, we've had quite a few people uh, turn up today. So um, that's good. And I will drag this across. Okay, now I'm not going to be able to get every comment in here. I want it to be related to what we're talking about. Uh, but, you know, we've got a few people saying they can't stay long, got to finish supper and things like that. So that's all good. And uh, a lot of few crew saying uh, good morning as well. So let's just go to sleep, mate. 10.30 p.m. But if I wake up, can't sleep. Oh, no worries, Cheryl. It's all good. KB, welcome. Can't stay long, Marty. Have to finish supper. No probs. Ed, Deborah B, good morning all. And a few people saying good day to people uh, in here from uh, what part of the country uh, that they're from. And it's nice seeing everyone having a bit of a yap in here. Now, no dig gardening is basically how I do my gardening now. Well, I have done it for quite a long time using uh, my straw bale system and mulching and uh, a few different techniques that um, I've put in. Some stuff I've shared in here, uh, not everything because some people just don't want to watch it, uh, that's, which is a bit unfortunate, but uh, yeah. Anyway, um, did you, were you able to hear that that video okay or didn't it, didn't it come out? Sounds like it didn't work. What a bugger. Uh, no sound, no sound, no sound, no sound, no sound, no sound. Oh, sorry guys. Well, unfortunately, it was sound here on my end, uh, but it just wasn't coming through. So, really sorry about that. But I'll just give you a little bit of rundown. So basically what we, we saw there was um, the parts of the farm uh, where we're sort of like going in between the rows. And in between each row, there was like mulch being filled up and then you would pour that mulch back into, as it's breaking down into the center of the row, back onto the pile to uh, avoid digging. So what a bugger that that, uh, that didn't work. So sorry about that, guys. And, um, but we, you can hear me now. <laughs> and uh, we, are, we are here. It should have been able to play. Uh, I was recording the screen, but um, that's how things go sometimes. I can't really do much uh, about that other than we replay it again and I play it through um, my speakers, but then we might get reverb and stuff. So what we'll do is I, at least I know now for next um, next week's show. So like the event, look, this, this just gets straight into the content, right? So the advantages of, of No Dig basically is we're really creating fertile soils, living soils that, you know, uh, we're building up our soil web so the soil web actually takes care of our plants and feeds our plants and things like that. And, and you know, um, the microbiology is what actually sends the, the nutrition from the vitamins and vitamins. I'm still a bit stunned because that video didn't work. Uh, so, you know, like our NPK value, our minerals and things like that actually go up through through the ground because photosynthesis is going through the leaves and then sending energy down the ground creating sugars and things like that and then everything breeding and feeding on each other and creating good and bad bacteria and sending up um, the nutrients to the plant as the plant requires it and then leveling off ph and things like that and so we're always just basically feeding on top we're avoiding the digging uh, as much as we can and I think the, the the major the major advantage is, is that we're actually building a soil deep a deep soil profile over time, and that creates uh, better water storage for in our dry dry lean times, and also when it's very wet, uh, better drainage, and then that creates better root structure 
for the plants to be able to move through and create a good root system, not only to lock themselves down from wind and storms and things like that, but to hunt for food and to set itself up its base underground. Because actually, above, uh, uh, below the ground is just as important as above. So we really need to think about how we're feeding the soil on top and not, and not so much thinking about feeding the plant because when we're feeding the soil what the soil needs, the plant then uptakes it. And so if we're putting things like manures and different um, those type of organic fertilizers on top, when they're breaking down, the water's hitting it, it uh, it's disintegrating and sending, up, sending out that nutrient, which is good for the plants. And also all the microbiology and fungi and everything is helping everything stay together. And so if we go through and, and dig that, say, up every season, so we've just built a nice new garden. We've gone through, uh, everything's grown really well. We've harvested, and then we've gone through and just dug it up again next season, just churned the crapper out of it. What we've done is we've basically killed all that soil life, and we've turned it into more of a blood and bone, if that's a good terminology for it. So the plants will have something to feed on, but they're feeding on all that dead matter that you've just put back through the soil. So what we want to do is the same stuff that would feed on that dead matter, we can put that on top, on the top layers, cover it with a mulch and um, build our soil profile. So it gets better and better uh, each and every year. And when we're doing that, uh, it just plants just seem to grow much better. They seem to get much healthier. And also um, a healthier plant has a stronger cell wall. So when it's got a stronger cell wall, what it means by that, it's not sort of floppy and lanky and soft you can grab a really good healthy tomato plant that's growing really well, uh, especially a good organic one, and squeeze the stem, and it's rock hard. And so like if a piercing insect comes along and lands on it, it goes to pierce it and it goes, wow, that's just too hard, I just can't get in, I'm going somewhere else. <laughs> so, uh, you know, like, and uh, different you know, types of fungi and like, uh, not fungi, but you know, black spot and stuff like that. If it gets getting on there, it can't penetrate into the sap system as much because the nutrient and sap flow is just going so well that again, it just can't survive. So basically pests really go for plants that are not healthy. This is how nature works. So they'll go for, and for the unhealthy plants and get rid of those and the healthy plants survive and strive on. So there's a real lot of advantages in creating nice, deep, structured soils but let's talk about the disadvantages as well now the disadvantages are in the beginning stages it's really not easy to get hold of all that compost and all that mulch sometimes it can be quite expensive and you go oh, i just want to do it like this i really want to do it like this but i can't afford it now this comes down to this is how what i recommend in that process is we actually look at the garden and go okay we want food we need food, we've got to have inputs. So we look at organic inputs that we can put in. We do actually dig, uh, not, not too deep, but you know, we dig enough to put the plants in and then we mulch over the top. And while we're, while we're digging, we're adding something like a calcium, a lime, uh, you know, blood and bone, things like that, and building up that soil. So there is some uh, food in there for the plants. And then we don't dig ever again after that. We just start putting layers on on top. And that's a cheaper way to go because look, to be honest, if you're going really big, um, it is hard. And you're better off having food grown in the garden than no food, right? Because you can, if you're digging it up and you don't do it again, um, then you're fine. You've got food coming through. It's living on the inputs that you've put in, put in. And over time and over the years, we just we just go and dig a hole to put our next plant in. As we're mulching and things on top, uh, the worms and stuff and the, are coming through and they're creating all our nice little highways and burrows and holes for the water to go down and building soil structure. So don't think that uh, you can't build a good garden with uh, out going in and digging. And you can also do uh, the other concepts like I do you're getting the bales and putting it on top and then just putting uh, letting it cure first getting it nice and moist and then putting compost on top and planting into it that works really well on heavy clay soils and also on uh, sandy soils so you know that's the way to go but a lot of people there's also the no dig system of the lasagna beds 
And you know, you can build a small lasagna bed first and then build out. So a lasagna bed is all different layers of straw and mulch and manure and compost and things like that. And if you've got, if you're not in a rush, you can build those beds slowly. So you go, okay, well, I can't afford to go, I don't wanna dig, but I can't afford to go out and put all these inputs in. So you just build a little one and just build out slowly and go, but I'm gonna plant next year, you know? So there's a lot of planning involved, but uh, you, there are other ways to do it to keep down the expenses. Now, the other thing, probably the other disadvantage is a lot of lugging around of wheelbarrows and things like that, you know, moving compost around and stuff. It can be quite heavy, moving mulches and, and different things around. So, you know, we've got to need to look at that uh, as well. But remember, once we've set them up, they are much easier work because we're not going through and digging and tilling each time and we're just putting layers on top. And as we're layering on top, we've got to make sure we don't go too thick with mulch and stuff because when it rains, we want that water to get through and hit the subsoil down below. If it's too thick, it's going to go halfway through the mulch and then it's going to be dry mulch underneath and then nothing. So we want that moisture going right through and locking to the soil and then creating that, helping build that uh, soil web. All right, so again, I apologize about the no sound for that video. Um, that's a real bummer, but we, you know, hopefully you're getting some value out of this content here and uh, that people, if, when they watch the rerun, just skip it through or they might just leave. I don't know. But anyway, we do, we do the best we can every week and, um, and get that out there. So let's go through and now if I had the comments open while I was doing that video, I would have thought, I would have noticed that, but anyway it is what it is we're going to try some other st streaming software um coming up very soon this one's a bit more expensive but i can actually stream old videos and uh, be there in the chat and things like that and um do i can do the live shows like this but then i can actually just set up and schedule a stream of say like the um, worm farming video that i did a while ago and then chat with you about it you know like in a live like a live stream so it just run, might run for 10 minutes or something that video so let me know if that's uh interests you i can run old videos and all types of stuff i just have to uh scale them down a bit so i can actually play them live and set them up a bit expense involved but if it people like it uh and they're watching it then it's worth it to me um oh Okay. G'day Rick, good to see you here mate. Green Leaf Gardening, g'day mate. And KP's got a bit of input here. And many of our bugs have a single digestive system and can't digest proteins. A healthy plant will let them, will them once they take a bite. Like, can you sort of explain that a little bit more clearly? That'd be great, uh, KP really interested in, um, especially the last bit, it says a healthy plant will then once they take a bite. So let's cover that, we'll go into that a bit more deep, deeper again. And let me know if you've, um, if you're, how, how you're doing your garden. Don't be uh, embarrassed about whether you're digging or no digging or whatever, everyone's, you know, you've got your own way of doing things. Uh, I'm just trying to help people to understand that uh, in time, you're better off converting over to no dig systems and learning because you'll get better results over time. And also, you know, we're locking, we want to lock and trap that carbon down into the ground for many different reasons. Uh, also, you know, for plants and soil health. And uh, yeah, it's doing that all the time. And some crew here. Dad's amazing adventures. G'day, mate. How's the trip going over there? <laughs> and. Yeah, some cool crew here. Just seeing what who else has turned up. I missed anything. Ah, da, 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 da. Okay, just some comments and stuff going on here, and I'm still getting used to this system. I, like I said, I might change over to the other one if I think that um, if people are going to watch, like I can set up a video and then I can rerun it. So an old one that might have been, it might be anything from two weeks old to uh, two months old, six months old. Um, I think that I think that would be really cool. But what I'm worried about is that you get in there and then they're like, you don't see me talking like this. I'm just gonna be in the chat box on the side. But 
Oh, we'll see. Let's go here to KP again. I sat through an ag program this past summer. Oh, awesome, mate. I will look up the doctor that teaches this here in Florida. I need to get back to you. Cooking blueberry pancakes. Okay, mate. <laughs> no worries. And as, as I said, let me know um, what you're using and what you're doing if you feel free to talk about it or any questions that you may have about no dig systems. Now, I liked um, when you're doing, so even like this, the, the bed that I built for the raised garden beds, they're no dig ones. We filled them full of mulch and straw and hay and, and uh, sugar cane and things like that and then put our compost on top. And if you saw the last video that I bought out, if you haven't seen that yet, a bit of a tour of the garden, uh, I do talk all about that. And they're, they're basically very similar to the straw bale gardening systems that I do. Uh, we're just inside the raised beds and we're backfilling them as we speak. So there really was not a lot of digging going on. It's just backfilling them up uh, the whole time. And that's, Deborah's gonna hear my bale garden is doing great, mate. Hell, oh, that's wonderful. Really ha happy to hear that. And we've had a fair bit of rainfall this season. So that really does help with the bale gardens uh, when we're in these La Nina events. When we're in the opposite way in the El Nino, um, we got, <laughs> it's really dry. Um, we have to add a lot more water. Um, but anyway, we've got a comp, it's, I'm really stoked that it's, that it's working for you. They, they, I've been doing them for years now. I just never look back and I'm, I'm gonna be getting some more to build. Um, I'm probably gonna start market gardening here in, in my backyard. And I'm even thinking about actually getting a trolley. So I'm, I'm considering putting out the front of my place like an honesty box with some food and things. And now my neighbors buy my eggs off me now, so I'm covering costs for my eggs. So I'm getting free eggs, it's just my time. But um, I wanna start growing like tomatoes and different things and get a little trolley and walk down the street with a bell and get ding, 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 food and bag everything up and get it ready to, you know. And, um, and people have told me that they're interested in buying stuff already. So, and I can do it cheaper than the shops and I can, high quality and just walk down to five o'clock in the afternoon ding 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 like the old days man i'm wondering i, I got a funny feeling that will work and um why i'm uh back at film school and uh could be a good little good little side income um to do so yeah i'm getting some more bales in i'll be getting more compost in and mulch so it'll take me a little bit to get the returns on it but uh, once the fruit trees start fruiting up and things like that and by next year um if it's all going well, I could be going down the street, not like Santa Claus. I don't know what we would call, <laughs> I don't know why I said Santa Claus. <laughs> Jojo blogs. The no dig requires a lot less inputs and the plant disease and mortality rate are lower from what I observed. Yes, uh, I, I agree. Um, it does work much better. I just want to mention about heavy clay soils, right? Um, you need to like do something. This is just my opinion of what I feel is I've got really heavy clay, right? And some areas are worse than others in my yard. And uh, it's been quite compacted and stuff. So some parts I've had to actually dig and get in there with a mattock and dig it up because it is just so compacted and so hard, like a worm couldn't even move through it. Uh, but where I've stuck the bales on top um, and then started, you know, you see the fungi and that coming up through the bales and everything like that. And it's, it's building a soil profile on top. That's a bit different, but it takes, you know, like six months to a year for those to start working. If you want to see something quicker and you're on a heavy clay soil, you do need to dig in, lime it up, or some dolomite, things like that, break up those clay particles so you've got a better soil structure. And then, you know, hit it, get, put some organic fertilizers in there, some manures and things like that, blood and bones, stuff like that. Stuff you know, make sure you get the calcium, you good, you know, an MBK in there so the plants get uh, a good broad spectrum of fertilizer. And then, as I said, just start adding on top and avoid the digging after that. But on heavy clay soils, in some cases, uh, you might have to do uh, your first dig. Okay, yeah, and pour it, with, pour it with worm juice. Use a little wormy juice on it now. That's really great for the uh, bales. And uh, yeah, I'm doing that every day uh, as we speak uh, as well, getting the worm juice uh, into my garden now. Uh, originally, um, I've been putting it back through the farms a lot but now I'm every second day, um, so every 50% of the time I'm putting it back through the farms and then the second harvest of the moisture that I'm, that I'm pouring back through, it's going out onto the gardens now. And I was really stoked to get that going. So um, 
yeah, awesome stuff. All right, CA. $50 from Matt Ellsworth. Dinner on me, Marty. Thanks for all the great content. Thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, I'm just going to see if we've got any crowd, the crowd applause. If that's working. Phew! <laughs> Gotta love that, don't you? <laughs> that was a big crowd, that one. Thanks so much, uh, Matt. It really means a lot, and it does help a lot, because um, to be honest, I think Marty's Garden did seven bucks yesterday. <laughs> which really makes me sad but you know these these things like this uh it just really helps add up people that being a part of the members you know uh buying the ebook and stuff like that down below with the links and things uh it really does help quite a lot so thank you very much uh matt uh, i appreciate it i truly do uh here we got a comment from our young little youtuber my soil looks like 75 percent sand Look at the bale gardening videos on YouTube and on my ones and see if you can get some bales around, mate. Start building on top of that sand. Sand can be really good. Uh, depending on your climate too, you can grow some really good fruit trees like avocados in sand. So keep that uh, in mind. Uh, being a young bloke there, you'd be, by the time you get up a bit older, those avocados would be firing. G'day, Ninja Blue, welcome. And um, hay or straw. Okay, so when you're building, uh, this, so we're staying on the subject of above ground sort of building. So if we're building above the ground and we're doing no dig systems, uh, whatever you can get hold of. Just be aware that sometimes different bales and things have seeds in them. Like I got Soteria grass, works quite well. It's baled up, I couldn't get it in sugar cane. Has some Soteria grass sprouting in it every now and again, things like that. So. Just be aware, but you know, um, I wouldn't be too worried about it. It doesn't matter if a bit of hay or straw shoots up here and there, just pull it out. You know, we're always dealing with other different types of weeds and things all around the place. So um, whatever you can get hold of, that's the cheapest. Other people may know uh, the difference between uh, the nutritional value of hay and straw. Uh, I don't have the stats on it right here, but they might be able to add it into uh, the chat here, which would be really cool. And um, yeah, we'll bring across another comment here by KP. Dr. Thomas Dijkstra, regenerative ag. That might be something you wanna look up, guys. Uh, yeah, if you're into that type of thing, I do recognize that name. He teaches all things bugs and garden. Awesome, that's really cool. Uh, very helpful, thank you so much uh, for that. And if we can add any value to help people uh, learn more about bugs and gardening and organic gardening, um, I'm all for you know building healthy soils at the same time and then as we get our soil really going really well building really good habitat now I'm getting um, oh, really good insects starting to turn up hoverflies native bees different types of bees we're seeing assassin bugs I saw a little baby blue tongue lizard about this big yesterday and I grabbed him and showed him a car he wasn't even putting his tongue out or hissing or anything, really happy just put him down near the bale and said, go in there, mate, so a bird doesn't grab you or chickens don't annoy you or something. Hide in there, come out and have a sunbake when needed. And it could be my little mate. Got to watch him now, they eat strawberries. I like my strawberries. <laughs> so yeah, we're talking about bale gardening, not bale gardening, <laughs> we're talking about no dig gardening versus dig gardening. And I'd love to hear what you got to say. I'm sure most people in here now these days are realizing that we're better off going into uh, no dig gardening systems and like I said if you need to dig first and then just build on top sort of after that and there's lots of different ways you can do it now so um, we got a question here from the energy let's get this one going hey Marty what's the best option to fill raised garden beds would placing bales on the bottom and then filling with a quality soil be the most cost effective thanks I found it is if you can get an arborist around that's doing trees nearby and you can get like arborist charge in about $15 a cube if they drop it off it used to be free but now they, they drop it off at landscapers and the landscapers sell it for $50 a cube right so um, it's a bit if you can get it like that for, for free is better obviously if you can get it cheap from an arborist and they're nearby uh, use that uh, if not uh, look at um, trying to get uh, a cheap bales and may, I've used a mixture of 
uh, free arborist material that I got from the local arborist when he dropped it off, and also uh, the bales. But I found the bales was actually a little bit cheaper, to tell you the truth. Um, but they will drop away quickly, so you've got to have a way to backfill over a period of the, of the next year as they're falling down because that material's uh, dropping down, dropping down. But it's becoming good quality, a good quality medium, right? When you deep roots right down into that and the worms and everything be coming up through and the fungi and everything's coming up through the ground and feeding on that system and setting up a really good garden. So it takes a bit longer, but um, if you're gonna mix it up, even better, maybe even trial um, some bits. If you're starting off going, just depends on your price. You go, oh, okay, I filled half with uh, the straw bale bed, garden part and then soil on top and the other bit with a mulch and I'm gonna build another one, what one was cheaper? Because all prices vary so much difference uh, around the place. And um, the end of the picture said, would the quality of soil be most effective? As long as you're not using uh, like an acidic wood chip in the garden. So you just need to use something that's fairly neutral and um, that would help you produce uh, a really good garden. Now I know bales, I know the bales do, because uh, they're very high in nitrogen and as they're breaking down and it's a food source for the plants and for the back and the, the bacteria and fungi and stuff like that so great question thank you very much for asking and i'm sure we've got some other questions uh to fire through guys on no dig gardening like what are you planting uh in your garden are you just going and digging a little hole once you've got it set up throwing a little bit of nutrients in there a bit of worm castings a bit of worm juice if you got it and hopefully you have planting the plant out and then mulching around the top and then just you know putting compost around the top mulching around the top and as you're seeing that mulch disappear a bit more compost if you've got a bit more mulch if you don't have the compost just a little bit, a bit more mulch and remember you always got to have not too thick so the water can get through now if you've got really high rainfall you can put it thicker just check that it's getting to the ground at the moment we got really high water, rainfall here uh, for the last few years so you're able to put it on thicker and build up soil profiles uh, much quicker but if it's drier and the other way around we've got to be a bit careful we want to be locking in that moisture and holding it in and stopping it from evaporating back out of the air and allow those plants to get it because trans plants need to take up moisture as well and drink like we are it's, just, it's the quality of life and as we say that time for a drink now, if you've got any worm farming questions or any other vegetable gardening questions, permaculture gardening questions, feel free to fire away. Happy to uh, to answer those. We've got about another 25 minutes uh, left on the show and I'm still a bit embarrassed that um, that video, you couldn't hear it. <laughs> Maybe it's a setting because I'm using the free EV marks that they just done. If you, I thought I could pull a hack and um, get a free free video out of it about having to upload but uh bugger didn't work <laughs> oh well let's get georgia kirby let's get her across here hey georgia i'm from western australia and very compacted silty soils do you know if gypsum would help gypsum's more really in clay soil um i don't know much about you know the silty soils as far as i know in western victoria uh, look, to be honest, that's a hard one. You'd have to find out if there's a fair bit of clay in that soil, then yeah, uh, the, the, I'd be more kind to go like with a dolomite, if it's a bit cheaper, or a gypsum. Now, dolomite actually holds uh, other minerals other than calcium in it, so um, just go with the one. But remember, you are actually feeding uh, the soil when you're using some of these minerals and things. So yeah, it possibly may help. I just don't really know so much about the soil. But, if it's compacted, what we're wanting to do is we want to try and get the worms and everything to be moving in to start breaking open uh, that soil. So if you start feeding the soil with compost and wood mulches and things like that, uh, that they just come out of nowhere, man. And they just start breeding up, laying cocoons, and before you know it, uh, they're tilling the soil and doing everything for you. So just think about the terminology of sort of feeding the soil more. And um, if you can do that anyway, we've, um, gypsums and dolomites and composts and rock minerals things like that uh, and it does all help uh, let's keep moving down here joe blogs 
blocks. If you get wood chips, it's best to get as fresh as possible and in a large quantity as possible. Keep it moist and it reaches a point where mycelium grows in it as a fine white fungal web. This is good for sure, for sure. One thing I like to do though, if I can, is I'll, I'll get um, a, a wood chip pile or say from the, the tree arborists, because the tree arborists have got lots of little branch, you'll have some leaves, you'll have some thicker branches and all stuff. So you end up with um, more of a structure of more of a natural system than saying a wood chip that's all the same size. Uh, and I like to let it sit for a while, build up some heat. If I've got a nice big pile of it over a cube, uh, it'll build up some heat and start to break down a little bit. And when it sort of starts getting a little bit sort of spongy and soft, um, that's when I'll put down, if I'm building my layers, I'll put that against the soil. And then what I'll do is then I'll get other, like a, another heavier wood chip or something else to put over the top of that. So I'm pretending that I'm building a subsoil in a way, like in the nature it's already fallen from the tree and it's sat there for a year and the rain's been on it, a bit of fungi's gotten on it. And then I create those layers like that and start building. So basically I, I just put piles around the place and then um, start building sort of on top that way. But uh, yeah, good point, uh, Joe Vlogs. Let's uh, keep moving here. KP, for those in the US, we have a very care, we have to be very careful with bales. You must know your source because they use Grayson here and it'll kill your garden. I've heard about that. Um, so yeah, good point. Thank you much, very much. Um, so do your research uh, before using the bales on that. Thank you very much, KP. I have a cucumber from seed absolutely going off loads of flowers. Is that it's probably going out of the bale garden too, is it? I bet, because they go really well. Uh, in that and Kirby said yeah very minimal clay okay well just you need to look at compost inputs right you need to look at carbon inputs um, and start getting that into into the soil I wouldn't be overly concerned about using gypsum and things like that I'd be more into finding um, I think that would there's a high mineral element in those so uh, yeah compost definitely and uh, carbon as on, on a top layer surface A uh, good point there by KP as it being a soil conditioner, but um, yeah, from my point of view, it's it's more of a clay soil thing. It's uh, you got to be careful too. Check your soil pH before you go in because you've already got like a an alkaline soil. You're adding a calcium mineral onto there. Uh, it's going to make it go more alkaline again, and then your plants won't uptake it. So we want to really keep uh, sort of a neutral to a little bit acidic in our soils if we can. And Deborah B's got a, a different type of question here. Why are my mandarin tree leaves on the new shoots are curling, Marty? There's There are some different, keep an eye on it. Um, it could just be that it's a cooler season this year. And as it warms up, um, they'll, the plants can up, uptake more nutrients that they need to by this time of year because the soil is much cooler uh, from the La Nina after the last couple of years. It's much more saturated. And so it can't always uptake all the nutrients that it needs. But in the next few months, when it's starting to get warmer, so I'll be putting down some chicken pellets and things like that, some compost and mulch and stuff, and uh, really watering it down a lot, well, in the rain and stuff, so those nutrients are getting down to the plant. There's also some different types of bugs and spiders that grab it and curl them around and pull them under the leaves and things. So I just open them up, pull them out. I've got some that are going a little bit curly as well. And I, I think it's a lot to do with just the um, the temperatures that we've been getting. We haven't been getting the really nice 28, 30 to 32, 33 degree days, which they get that three months of just oomphing and the soil's getting really warm and all that microbes and everything are really feeding the plant. So I'd say more than likely it's just a soil thing. I wouldn't be too worried about it. Just keep an eye open more on the colouring of the leaves maybe getting yellow and veins and things like that, then that's a problem. You'll find that um, they'll open up. And like I said, I've got something similar going on here. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. Um, it'll be fine. If anyone's got any other inputs, I'd like to add to it. Now listen to this. Can you hear the frog? Let me know if you can hear the frog. The big green tree frog in the drain pipe. There he goes. It's raining, and he's right next to right next to my bed. Thank goodness he's not going off too much at night at the moment. Uh, 
He loves that pipe because he can just send out a big wop, wop, wop sound out of the pipe. They love that. They can project themselves out. I oh, love my green tree frogs. Uh, yes. So Joe Boggs said here also about doing uh, a soil test. And um, yeah, I agree. You can test it yourself 24 hours to see the results and put the inputs. But, um, you know, just, just if you want to do a basic one, just do a pH. Oh, four point pH is four to four point five. I've been adding dolomite to increase the pH. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So you need to really look at that and uh, work on fixing that. Um, plants won't they won't enjoy being in in such a such a radical such a radical pH. We want to get it down to you know closer to just slightly acidic to sort of a more of a neutral. So um, yeah, that's 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 getting right up there, right? Okay, so whew, let's keep moving through. It's, it's, it says, dig down approximately four inches, then at the base of the hole, remove a handful of soil, wet this soil and make a clayish boil around one inch diameter, then use about 500 mil. Oh, it's answering something else for. Okay, let's keep moving forward here. If you've got any questions, uh, please feel free to, uh, yeah, any gardening questions, any worm farming questions anything along those lines if I can help like I don't know everything <laughs> but you know I am a qualified uh, horticulturist so I'll do the best I can uh, to help you uh, with your garden and worm farms and uh, move forward we've got about 20 minutes left in the show and remember um, you know like don't be afraid to ask simple questions and things like that some people have been in here for a long time they've got a lot of value to add and they can answer questions and things like that including myself and then others you know if you're a newbie and you're just getting started and you're thinking oh if i ask that they're going to think i'm stupid no one thinks that we just want to help right from the very beginning help you get started and growing more fresh food at home and you know we've been talking about the advantages of no dig gardening you obviously you build healthier soils um, you know, the very fertile, you're building black rich compost, which then goes deep in the soil profiles, which helps with drainage, helps with root growth. You know, it helps with um, storing water as well. So our soil bank, which I call our soil bank. So when we're in dry, time, lean times, we've got a nice deep friable soil. The water will come down, it'll store in that soil and it will hold it there much longer than say a soil that's just not working uh, well and not performing in its optimum so the plants will dry out quicker or you know the roots just won't can't move through and you're wondering what's going on with plants well it just takes a little bit longer when we're doing these no dig systems than going through and digging but it is well worth it building a soil web a, a live soil web we've got everything from all the microbes bacteria good fungi you know little invertebrates moving through such as centipedes and worms and different things and um you will really start noticing the difference. And if you can afford it at the beginning, uh, try and search out some really good high quality compost uh, nearby uh, if you can. And um, we, we did discuss the disadvantages uh, as well about having to move it around a lot. It can be quite expensive, it can be quite heavy, doing lots of wheelbarrows and things around. So um, there are some disadvantages, but I would say the advantages far outweigh um, the, the disadvantages okay let's some people are just typing in there to help each other out uh, and uh, yeah waiting for any more questions or comments uh, to come through and my garden at the moment it's doing okay if we didn't if you didn't see the last video where I said we're in six months go and check that out uh, after this video and have a look at it. You can also, if you want to support the channel to keep it going, uh, this wonderful, we got a, you know, a super chat today and things like that just help so much to keep this channel alive, even though I totally blew it with that video <laughs> at the beginning. People are still very nice to help me and uh, thank you so much again for that. And, you know, the super chat is available uh, just below the chat box there and you can do super stickers and different things. And also, you know, we've got a membership area where you can access uh, different courses and things on worm farming from um, 
from beginner right through to uh, in intermediate and also raising seedlings using worm castings in your worm farm things like that and, and also we've got the buy me a coffee link down below you can go across and buy me a coffee if you want to and i'll become uh, a member there if you don't want to be a member inside uh, the marty's garden channel we've also got my worm farming ebook starting a worm farm a beginner's guide and that is everything to get you going uh, worm farming if you're into reading and that's a better option for you which is also uh, a link down below there and we'll pull across uh, another comment here wabi sabi permaculture farm i love that name man that's cool wabi sabi i have a few bags of chook poo mixed with sugarcane mulch can i add it to my worm farm to speed it up to getting on my veggie garden 100 percent yes just be careful that you know like because chook poo has a lot of nitrogen in it right so you want to get your um Right, so you've got a few bags of chook poo, you've got sugar cane mulch. What you want to do is you want to try and sort of like blend it together. So uh, if, if you've got like, when you've got a square meter, just basically when you get the optimum heat, because all the bacteria is going to vibrate and doing what it needs to do, it heats up and um, the nitrogen's firing away and it takes the heat out of it. So just be careful if you're adding um, the chook poo that's quite fresh with the sugar cane. It does let out gases and things like that, which the worms don't like. And then also it can get hot, which can the worms don't like. So be a little bit careful with it, but if you can compost it down a little bit first, uh, just brilliant stuff. Or you can put sugar cane in and just a little bit of cow manure, a little bit of um, chook poo, so it doesn't get too hot and heat up too fast. Uh, just like a handful, that's what I do. And put it on top around the food and they'll, they'll chew it all down. And um, it really is good stuff. Have a look at my Taj Mahal worm farm. Uh, on the channel here that's something similar how I do it um, using the sugarcane mulch in the worm farms and uh, that would work really good if you're just using small amounts of chicken manure at the time with good airflow and Minky Amalia welcome to the show nice to see you here uh, today thanks for coming in and dropping some support nice to see you KP I ordered my worms another bed but they've not set them yet i think it's because we're going to freeze the next three nights whoa oh it's coming in cold yeah maybe you just maybe you need to get in touch with the crew or i don't know you're in the states it's from memory uh but good luck with that and um yeah just keep them keep them nice and nice and warm for sure all right so we're into the show um i can't see how many we've got 20 people watching got no idea on how many thumbs up we've had today so if you can send across, send us a few thumbs up, that'd be great. That'd just be wonderful. I wonder if we got any thumbs up, thumbs up music that we could use. Let's try this one. Thumbs up. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> it's a bit of fun. Anyway, I like to get a bit crazy sometimes on the show. If you know me and you're watching, some people go, oh, I'm out of here. This guy is a complete maniac. But what I want you to do is just give me a thumbs up if you haven't already. We're talking about no dig gardening and the benefits of it. Building these beautiful, nice, deep, friable soils, living soils full of a soil web that feed the plants, keep the plants healthy from attack from pests, produce a better quality food, tasting food for you, high nutrition for you and just way to go and i'm also saying if you can't afford it to get started and you're on heavy clay soils and things like that, you might need to dig first and add some dolomite and some calcium things like that and then stop digging after that and start building a soil profile on top so that's a quick breakdown of what the show has been about and some awesome comments and things coming through from the crew all right deborah b I've added a layer of sugar cane to the worm farm. They love it, moving through the farm just beautifully. When they're really hungry and that sugar cane starts breaking down, man, they can really get through it, right? It's um, And it makes a beautiful casting, like this fluffy, fluffy casting. I really like it. So I'm stoked that that's working for you, obviously using something similar to the Taj Mahal method. And um, yeah, that sugar cane, especially the stuff that comes in the bag, it's a lighter, fluffier, sugar cane than um, what's uh, in the bales and um, all right so let's keep moving forward 
Yeah, got a bit of a sniffle going on. It's hard to do sometimes around these live shows. But we've got 10 minutes to go on the show, so hang around. If you've got any questions, get them in before we before I finish up here and fire away and share. We're talking all about uh, no dig gardening versus, versus you know, dig gardening. But we also discussing now we get near the end, you know, worm farming, composting, gar- all types of vegetable gardening, permaculture, things like that. So... Feel free to fire away. No question is too stupid or too easy or whatever to answer. Uh, happy to do it. And the input from the people here uh, in the show also is really great. And here we go. KP, we grow sugar cane here. However, we do have sugar cane mulch. Can you take us on a field trip and show us how it's made? It would be an excellent resource for us to have. A lot of the sugar cane farmers around here, man, they are hardcore dudes. I'm telling you, and they work really hard. I don't know if we could, we could get there. There are, there is a um a company up the coast in Queensland. I'm not too sure how far away they are. I just can't think of their name at the moment. I do buy an organic blend from them in bags, sometimes a potting mix, um, and maybe I don't know. If it's not too far. I'd go up there and have a look. I've got a feeling it's a fair way away. Um, so yeah, there's a fair bit involved in it. Um, they, they really, they're really hardcore guys, and they probably just tell me to nick off. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if I can, I will, because it'd be a great thing to do. Ninja Blue, should you add sugar cane to compost? Uh, yes, as a as a, um, a a source for a nitrogen source. Um, I mean, not a nitrogen source. Well, it has got some nitrogen in it, but uh, for a carbon source, then you would add more nitrogen to it. Uh, it, it makes a very good compost and if you can get it cheaply um, yeah for sure go for it I also use it in the worm farms that I've been talking about in the Tajam Ahal method T-A-G-M-A-H-A-L look that up on the channel and check out that type of worm farm if you've got access to it um, but I like just getting the straw bales and and, um, and the sugar cane bales and just putting it on top once it's nice and wet and moist and spongy then putting compost on top and building my uh, like lasagna no dig beds uh, like that and I just stack them in rows and I'm not I don't have to dig down or bend down much and eventually just you can grow anything out of these things um, I find it really moist at the moment just locked in with heaps of worms and fungi popping out of them everywhere and like I said all these animals and creatures are moving in and lizards living underneath them and the whole thing's really starting to work uh, quite well uh, Joya Kirby got to head into work thanks everyone bye see ya thanks for coming Georgia and glad I, we could add some value uh, to help you with your uh, gardening on the way your organic gardening ventures uh, excuse me <laughs> a little bit of an itchy nose uh, Jojo Blogs from little things big things grow start small and keep chipping away slowly wins the race lots of fun seeing the results of great it's so true just chip away uh, like the, the turtle, just be a turtle and just keep on going. You'll be surprised what you get here. I remember when I first turned up at my place looking at it, and even now I go, oh, there's so much work to do, but then I just get little bits done all the time, and then, you know, the plants are growing and things, and I said to Karen, my daughter, the other day, when we are in the car, parked and dry, I said, look how good the garden looks now. I said, and this is just the start, and she goes, yeah, Dad, it looks beautiful, and so, we're just in the beginning so just a little bits and pieces and try to systemize it so you don't create too much work for yourself uh, is probably the best way to do it um, so I I've only got a little electric mower so I mow a little bit of my lawn every day uh, and then by the time I get to the end <laughs> I've got to go back to the front but it's only 10 or 15 minutes uh, sort of each time uh, so something like that is a system that I'd be talking about my raised, raised garden beds have given me a great supply of tomatoes this summer I've fed the neighbours, extended family cucumbers, spring onions are great as well. That is just absolutely awesome. Thanks so much, uh, Deborah, for sharing that. So stoked that it's going uh, well for you. And I know, I'm pretty sure you're doing, how's your worms going? Are you still worm farming and enjoying that and using your, the liquids coming out of the worm farms to grow amazing foods? Oh, I'd love to hear more if that's the case. And uh, you're very welcome. Glad to we uh, we can help uh, Ninja Blue. And um, I'm here every Saturday, uh, 9:45 Sydney Australia time. We run for a, an hour, and 
doing my best to improve these shows each week and to get as much good information out of there as possible. I find that actually the reruns don't do so well. I actually lose subscribers from these reruns, uh, but I just wanna keep connecting with you guys. And if I know that if I keep improving these videos and keep working on them, eventually in time, it'll work. And um, YouTube are bringing out uh, YouTube podcasts. It's available some parts of America and um, I think once they get it sorted, then there's gonna be an RSS feed that's gonna run out um, to all the different platforms. And that'll just be amazing. So, you know, if I get my practice in and like this, and uh, Marty's Garden will have a much bigger reach uh, in the future. So it's another reason why we're here uh, each Saturday. As I said, look, my last video live show lost three subscribers, uh, only got a 33% view time, which in I do about 48, percent something like that. people watch mostly about half of the, the video depending on how long it is but you know we keep plugging away get here each saturday and um a lot of you get a lot of value from these i know that and and really get to take these things that we're talking about and putting them out in the garden and getting more food as you saw some of the people that um i've pulled across uh you know have, have been watching this channel for ages and they're growing amazing food at home and supplying it to their friends and family which is just brilliant and i hear if I get a little market garden, I'm gonna be going up the street with a bell, little trolley, and uh, ding, ding, get your tomatoes. <laughs> Carol Moore, how do I overcome pot worms? Wor it should be worms in my worm farm. I have crushed eggshells, reduced feeding and watering, but they're prevalent. Should I add some dolomite? Yeah, check, yeah, just get a little bit in there. Yeah, they, they will cut back. Uh, it could be, actually, it's probably, might be too moist um, as well. So, you know, like, just just cut back and, and see what happens. Uh, if there's no food source in them, they can't keep on breeding. So, and you know, it's a bit of a tricky one. It's hard to know where they're coming through. But yeah, I would get a bit of uh, crushed eggshell, some dolomite, and then I would just be adding a little bit of newspaper, carbon, things like that to feed the worms and cut back on the other food sources uh, for the time being. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. I hate... I hate I hate podcasts. <laughs> well, this is a type of podcast, mate. Don't make. Come on, you got to build the confidence in me, not <laughs> not stealing away. <laughs> um, okay, Jojo blogs. Carol Moore reduced overall moisture. Fluff up the worm beds, aerate them. Pot worms like bank borderline anaerobic conditions. Great tip there, um, Joe Bloggs. Thanks so much for sharing that. That's a good tip. So get in there and fluff it up and make it more aerobic. Um, that's a really good one. Thank you so much. I love this community. Sometimes when I'm not thinking straight or I haven't got an answer, someone comes in and helps. It's really cool. Yes, worm farms are going well. I supply my dad with compost castings and worm tea also. Now, if you check in my, um, like in my ebook and and in the Worm Wranglers members area, I talk a lot about how you build your um, you build your worm farms and put them together. How you get your you know your bedding right, how you feed them correctly, things like that. And then you don't have problems with things like pot worms and pests and all that type of stuff. So it's generally what we're doing is we're setting it up wrong. Like so, Joe Block said, then uh, it's probably compacted, right? Because it's gone anaerobic, and then the pot worms are sort of feeding on that. So when we've got a system that's out of balance, we create another problem so i highly recommend and i'm not trying to sell you anything or anything like that but it will help you uh big time you know to get something like that ebook uh down below or just check out that worm wrangler videos they're really cheap i don't make them expensive at all and you just save yourself so much time by having access to uh, the content like that and getting it started and then it also teaches you how to manage these farms more so in the wranglers members area uh, the sort of long-term management of the farms, which they're in the links uh, down below. And Deborah B, I need to save up for my second worm farm now. Well, that's interesting. Uh, you're gonna go for an above ground bed one, or what are you gonna do there? Um, interested, interested to know. But you know, we're, we're gonna finish up soon anyway, so we mightn't get to that. Uh, but it's been, it's been a fun show. And I really enjoyed uh, having everyone coming in and having a chat and putting their inputs in. And even though the video didn't work, seven minutes of no sound, you stuck around. So thank you very much uh, for that. 
and uh, KP. This is video, podcast of the sitting and listening. I don't have attention span of a gnat. <laughs> don't let me or anyone else stop you. A lot of people love listening in their car. It's just a matter of getting out and reaching to more people. So you have the option, KP, of actually watching the video like this. And then what happens is, is that YouTube's gonna grab that audio file and then share it out to other people how they want to uh, listen to it. Actually, YouTube now have um, have uh, bigger than Spotify when it comes to um, to this system actually and people are watching it uh in video and they actually just put the video on and they just you know run it through youtube and cook their dinner and it's amazing that uh it's actually gone into that so i'm pretty excited uh, about that but i think we're still um a fair way off and for me i just you know i want to keep producing these videos and getting them better obviously we've got to look into making sure we've got sound uh for the <laughs> for the next one and running that through uh, the, the, the one I'm looking at the moment, uh, it can actually grab. So if I, I've shot this video now and everything's come out good, um, it will pre-record it, and then I can actually set it off to um, play it again in two or three hours to another audience that may be waking up and going to sleep at a different time. And then I can just be in the chat box. So uh, I can run it again later on in the day, uh, things like that. So I think that, um, I'll definitely look at it. It is quite it's quite an expensive software, but you know if I can reach more people and um, you know it, it pays for itself, then um, it would be worth it. Would love one in the bales. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can pro probably you know if you've got a spare tray, because um, if you do, you can buy a three tray farm. Uh, if you've got a spare tray. You can just sit it on top of one of the bales, um, like what you see what Peppy did with the on top of his garden, he just stuck it on top, the Taj Mahal top one, and they moved down into the compost. Now he's got a compost garden, so they'll go down and live in there. They're mostly, then the night crawlers, um, so the Europeans and the, and the, and the not tigers, the Europeans and Africans, they go up and down a deeper soil profile. So they're really good, like in those type of uh, veggie gardens. Uh, here we go, let's keep pulling this across. I'm trying to understand what you and Mark and Tony are saying. I don't know, you've lost me a little bit there. I think maybe you're making a bit of a joke, teasing me up a bit there, but that's okay. While I'm, while I'm working, I listen to many permaculture podcasts. I also listen to yours. Oh, thank you very much, that's great. Uh, uh, like I said, it's still a way off yet, but it's be interesting to be able to reach more people like that. Time's limited for me to have to go and then take the audio out and then put it all different places and things like that. So. They do it straight through YouTube from a live show on the Saturday. Um, it could help, uh, you know, this channel stay alive and they build the Marty's Garden brand. So we're putting the website up and stuff. Oh, excuse me, a little bit of sinus there. How are the chickens going? Chickens are going great. Um, they've, we've kept them in the, um, the south corner of the fenced off area. They can still fly over that chicken fence when they want to. They can sometimes find a little spot, little plastic unlevel and push their way out. But I'm not too bothered now as much because the garden's much more set up where they can't really go around and make too much of a mess. If you saw in the last video, I made this uh, mesh, put this plastic mesh around the bottom of the fruit trees so they can't scrape away the mulch and dig around and pull. They were pulling out nearly to the root ball before, so they can't get to that. I put that a few parts around some of the permaculture garden and they got heaps of places to dig and hunt now. Hunt now. So um, they're not just going in and zoning in on one spot and destroying it. They're actually free ranging around everywhere and just doing little bits here, little bits there and actually more working the garden now. Karen's been teaching them to catch grasshoppers, which has been really fun. And uh, cause they didn't know what a grasshopper was. And yeah, they, they're doing okay with a black chicken fatso. Fatso's been, um, Oh, sitting on the nest quite a lot, getting quite broody, but we think we're getting her out of that. Um, and yeah, they're all doing really good. Once we get the composting systems up and getting them into the big piles and things, uh, it's gonna be interesting. But uh, you know, it costs a bit of money to get these mulches and things in and that. So every time Marty's Garden makes a little bit of money, put a little bit in back in and uh, build it out. So, you know, they'll be playing their role uh, much more out in the future. And um, yeah, we're selling uh, two thirds of the eggs and keeping the other third for ourselves. So um, yeah, 
good man morning there my friend good to see you uh do you get foxes yes we there's foxes all through australia uh look they're even in the cities and stuff and that you know like around with this little bush and stuff fox killed my um year many years ago my galah and i lived in uh, sydney in the suburbs um but we've got an electric fence that runs around the back of the house and then also there's you know they've got to have to dig under a spot to sort of get in and we've got a gate two gates and um i haven't seen any foxes in the yard I've seen a couple of snakes big big pythons but no foxes yet but they'll be around 100 percent. but they can't get into the coop at night it's just it's fully uh fox proofed um there might be a time when there'd be a little hole and maybe a snake could get under but um you know we, we try and keep an eye on that um as well have you gone surfing this year no i haven't <laughs> i definitely need to go soon though uh it's been um, now I'm living not so close to the beach. I don't go down and check it as much. But And I've been really sort of into the, what I'm doing here and then spending time with my daughter over the holidays. Um, but I definitely will be getting back um, very shortly, uh, hopefully with some friends and, um, and going surfing. I need, to, I need to get those boards back in the water and build up some muscle fitness again. Deborah B., he missed the first half of me saying, enjoy trying to understand them. He probably would not understand what I, of what I say. I'm Southern, like his daughter's name. Okay, I can't understand. Oh, okay, you can't understand what he's calling her. Is that, you've lost, I'm sorry, you've, you've lost me a bit here. Um, guys, maybe you're chatting amongst yourself there. And I pulled that across. But yeah, being an Aussie, we've got our slur slang and uh, it's a lot of fun. But listen, anyway, we've gone into um, a bit over an hour now. We've got 21 people watching. If you haven't given us a thumbs up before the show ends, please do so. Uh, I'm gonna run through. Uh, we've got the, let's have a look at some, I'm testing some of the sounds here. Uh, let's try the magic twinkle. Let's see how this goes. Ooh. The magic twinkle. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Don't know if I'll have that. I'm, I'm going to try and try some new software uh, in the next week. And um, like I said, I may be, may be running out some videos, some old videos and things like that. And they'll be live, but I won't be talking like this. I'll be in the chat box. So that could be interesting. We'll see how they, if they roll out, how things going. Uh, I'm working on another video to hopefully have out on Wednesday. Um, some stuff, some permaculture gardening stuff, and how some of the, I'm doing some of the things here um, in the garden as I'm building it out. And then we've got some other videos where I've been shooting out on the farm uh, at 560 Farms. And they're related to, um, you know, we break it down to related to the backyard stuff as well. So you can get tips and tricks out of that. So plenty coming. I've just got to get in there and do some work, and keep working hard and try and find out a surf. I did go fishing the other day, um, so that was good. I'm gonna go fishing again and um, just wait for that winds to get right. I'm going for a paddle. Now you've got me psyched up. All right, thank you so much for coming to watch the show. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for your help. Remember, there's some links down in the description if you wanna support the channel, get an ebook, learn how to worm farm more, get access to courses, things like that. Check them out and uh, every little bit helps uh, this channel stay alive and keep growing. And uh, thank you so much for your time and being a part of the show. And I will see you at the next video real soon. Bye for now. Bye guys. Oh, actually, you know what I forgot to do? You, I always do this. You gotta say goodbye to each other. Let's roll them out. We'll get the, the comments on and um, say goodbye to me, say goodbye to the crew, and then we'll work out for the next software if we can run some music, because we used to have that really cool song uh, in the background. and. Um, Sorry about that, guys. I nearly even forgot for everyone to say goodbye. Uh, for each other. Thanks, JJ Blogs. And uh, I love it saying goodbye to you guys all at the same time as well. So please say goodbye to me and the other friends uh, in here. And uh, we're, it's a great community and uh, stoked. So you rock, Marty. Thanks for being so positive and continue to share your wealth and knowledge. Thank you so much for coming and watching and being a part of it. That's really cool. The owners are selling this place. I've just lost all motivation. Oh, I, I get it. I get it. It's going to be really hard in those situations. 
enjoy the weekend. You too, Rick. Thanks for coming to watch the show. And uh, Rick says goodbye, everyone. See you later from Ninja Blue. Thanks, mate. Thanks for coming. And I'm uh, so lucky I forgot, nearly cut you all off there. And remember, we're here next week, same time. If all goes well. Uh, the only thing that will stop me is like there's a pumping surf. I'm definitely going surfing on the, <laughs> the next Saturday. Uh, but if um, just keep an eye on the post. 95% of the time, we're up and running here, unless there's some type of problem or whatever. Wabi Sabi, thanks so much for coming in. Deborah B, see you everyone. Get your phone out, Marty, get that music out. I'll sort it out, man. I just gotta keep going through uh, and working these. I don't wanna go back to Ecamm Live if I can. Um, there's better options out there these days. I've just gotta learn how to use them. And, um, and find ways to get more content out um, so we can keep the channel alive as well because when I get more content out, I reach more people and um, make a little bit more income from uh, the AdSense. Deborah B, great stuff always, mate. Well, thank you very much. Again, I appreciate and love each and every one of you. Happy gardening. Please, if you haven't given us a thumbs up, do so already and leave a comment in the box down below if you've watched this all the way to the end as a rerun. I'd love to know. Have a great day. See you later, everyone. And uh, wherever you are in the world, maybe sleep well. Bye for now.